Welcome first time listeners and returners to the Sports Deli. A little bit about your host today, Hooty Hoot. I coached college basketball for 23 years, 15 on the men's side and 8 on the women. And I now coach at a low income first generation high school girls basketball here in San Diego. I played four years of college basketball. I'm a life coach. I have a beautiful daughter. I'm a professional basketball skills trainer. We love to share space with our guests here in the Sports Deli to talk about the intersection between race and sports, mental health and sports, equality, empowerment, empathy, leadership, education, sports, and solutions. We want to help mobilize, listen, learn, and pay it forward. You can always send us an email to thesportsdeli at gmail.com. And you can also DM us on Instagram at Mike Hootner or on Twitter at Michael Hootner. We're so honored that you're joining us today. And we hope that you can grab your favorite deli sandwich or bagel and your favorite beverage. And let's do this together in the sports deli. All right, let's do this. Excellent. Let's do it. All right, everybody. We're uh, on IG Live, Facebook Live. Uh, appreciate you bearing with us uh, during these technical difficulties. Um, but we welcome Phaedra Knight, uh, president of Billie Jean King's Women's Sports Foundation. And for those of you that didn't join us the first time, we had her on our podcast. Uh, we're doing this to promote her new uh, line of clothing. And you can see uh, she's sent my daughter some stuff. Uh, we got the the PSK back here. We got some some she's going to talk about it, but we got some some different things, uh, all kinds of different um, designs and things like that. So we're, we're pumped to, to be a part of uh, promoting uh, Phaedra's uh, new line of clothing. She's gonna tell us about it, um, but she, we're gonna talk about a, a, a few things today and we're, we're excited to have you. So uh, let us know a little bit about how this idea came about and uh, we're going to tell everybody where they can find it. And we're so excited about it, your expansion. And uh, welcome, welcome to the Sports Deli. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's good to uh, join you for a second time. I feel very lucky. Um, but I guess pandemic has its, its benefits, right? <laughs> 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 awesome. Well, listen, this, this um, clothing line came about um, it, it's been something in the making for me for a long, long time. Um, you know, growing up and, and um, uh, being a, you know, just a notable tomboy, um, yeah. it, always active. I never could really fit conventional women's clothes. It was always a challenge for me. I hated shopping, hated going in stores. And so, um, I, you know, and I, engaged in some conversations with other athletes as I got older, especially after I started discovering weightlifting and that really made it complex. Um, but talking to other athletes, they shared the same issue, right? They would buy pants that wouldn't fit the legs. Um, they were too tight and they were huge in the waist or the, you know, the opposite, too small in the waist, um, you know, it, it, so you had you had a multitude of different issues based on different body types amongst athletes, and so you know I thought, wow, it, there's a need, there's a white space, um, it, there's this white space for clothes that actually fit, right? Clothes that are comfortable, clothes that mm -hmm. offer a sort of inclusive um, feel and approach to them, and you know, I coupled that with this idea of social justice, right? I am very passionate about um, women's equity and women's equality, uh, e equity and equality across the board. But yeah. where we're deficient is obviously in the women's department. And so yeah. I thought it would be a great idea to take apparel um, and, and marry it, this idea of social justice um, for a real, a real cause, a greater cause. And so this is essentially how the PSK Collective was born. That's awesome. So you were in your PSK collective, one of the uh, designs with the hat. You got your, you got a, a "We Dare to Inspire" shirt on. What is the, what does it say under sure. the two? What is it, what's under the two inspire well, part? Let me, let me, let me, let me let you read it. You see. <laughs> Let's see if we can pull it down. We dare so, to inspire without, without limits. limits. <laughs> and 
constantly constantly strive, strive to, to break, break <laughs> boundaries boundaries wait where are we are i want you to be up can we read can we read it this is the these are the these are the uh downsides of um upside down uh, so people that are listening on the yeah, podcast yeah, later yeah. they're gonna think i'm slow right. or something's wrong with me so what are the what the yeah. what the bottom part say the last couple of words part is to the PSK collective, right? So it's boundaries. Ah. Um, welcome. To ah, the PSK nice. Collective. So, and on your right. website, it says, as you mentioned, not only inclusivity and, you know, working with social injustice and stuff, but uh, clothing promotes inclusivity, empowerment, and equality by supporting female athletes through, through the Women's Sports Foundation. So talk about the That's Women's right. Sports Foundation a little bit, you know, how you became involved in that and why uh, this endeavor is, is such a, an important one and the collab, you know, with, with uh, Billie Jean King's foundation. Sure. I mean, I have been um, a part of the Women's Sports Foundation in very different capacities for almost 20, well, over 23 years. I wow. started out um, as an advocacy intern. Uh, make sure you can hear me. Hold on one second. There we go. Are you, can you hear me now? I don't yeah. know if you could hear me then. Yeah, go ahead and say that again. All right. So I've been a part of the Women's Sports Foundation um, in some form or fashion for over 23 years. I started with the foundation as an advocacy intern under Donna Lopiano back in 1997. This is a- Wow, I didn't know that part. That's amazing. Yeah, this was before I started playing rugby. And wow. It was actually, um, actually it was at the t around the time I actually started playing rugby. Um, nice. I had I had no idea there was a US team at that point. And I, went, I remember going and interning for the foundation um, one summer, that, that summer, and seeing a picture of the women's national rugby team and like being like, oh my God, there's a women's national rugby team. This is crazy. So I started as an intern, and wow. then and then I um, I, I came back after that that you know that fall, and I volunteered uh, for their annual salute. That was my first in, uh, encounter with like major athletes. I, I met at that time Jackie Jonah Kersey. I uh, got to hang out with Dominique Dawes and, wow. and like, you know, it was just so awesome. Crazy. I think, wow. you know, at that, yeah, I met Julie Fowdy, um, you know, I think Mia Hamm was at that, at that um, particular dinner as well. And th for me, that was like the, the bit of inspiration that I needed to really um, push me to a level of inspiration to, to, to strive for, um, you know, playing uh, at the international level i mean this was yeah, it so but it's, but it's amazing though because you didn't you weren't going to play rugby right uh no, you, you I, were, you're no. going to do something else <laughs> yeah i was i was going to walk on to the badgers basketball team right i was still Man, holding on to you know that dream this, uh, yeah so i ended up just kind of letting go and um you know then i went from you know being a, a, a volunteer to being an athlete amb ambassador and, um, you know, that was awesome being invited to my first um, red carpet event as an athlete um, was exceptional. I mean, I was completely, completely changed and opened my eyes. It was most, it, and it, it still remains the most inspirational night of the year um, going to this, uh, this event. It's amazing hearing athletes stories, being around all these awesome athletes, being around all these people who love athletes. It, it just doesn't get any better than that. Um, and then I moved into um, a role of an athlete, uh, or at least to the uh, athlete advisory panel, um, which is, you know, a consortium of athletes who essentially work with the, the foundation. And um, we have quarterly meetings, but we, we, we are the, probably the more active, some of the more active um, ambassadors within the organization out there doing the good work. Um, and then a few years back, I was approached and asked um, or invited to become a part of the board of trustees. Mm. And, um, you know, that's when things got serious. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> so, Man. again, an honor to serve. And it's just been awesome being surrounded by the minds in that room, um, the vast amount of experience that they bring from their particular area in sport and life. And so, you know, that again was an honor. And then when I was, you know, tapped on the shoulder about this presidency opportunity, oh my God, that was just the full circle dream come true. Mm. Um, that that's, you know, 
that was always like something that I held very highly. Um, obviously, strove. You know, I, I, I had this 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 vision um, and this drive and this hope to one day, you know, be in this role. And so it's just you know now that I'm here, you know, my goal is to just really make a difference um, and and continue to make a difference right from now until the end. I mean. The foundation is an organization that I will always, always, always serve. Yeah. And so it's been an honor. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's definitely been a shift. Um, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily all uh, since George Floyd, but, but that's yeah. one of the layers. Um, you know, the Me Too movement, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, uh, passing away and her impact in society. Um, yeah. And so, um, Talk about the the foundation and and the collaboration with uh, with your clothing line and how we can uh, bridge this gap, uh, yeah. not only with social injustice, but not and not only girls, but uh, girls of the black and brown community, which uh, participation in sports uh, and extracurricular activities is still not uh, at fifty percent. And, right. you know, we're on the heels of the 50th anniversary of Title IX right. coming up next year. And we want to, you know, continue to change this narrative with people. And, and just as we say with anything, uh, we want everybody to have a seat at the table. Exactly. That's, all, that's, that's all we're asking for to, to move forward. And, and then from there, <laughs> things will be much more rich and, and yep. uh, more depth. And, you know, it'll, it'll be a better experience for everybody, but there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> Well, that's the, I mean, exactly. That's at the end of the day, there's enough power, there's enough money, there's enough access, there's enough every opportunity for everyone to have yeah. as much as they want, right? And until we as, a, as human beings can, can, and people, the people, and particularly for those that are, hold the power or this perceived idea of power, until we come to that, um, that you know, uh, some, some sort of um, understanding of that, we, we, you know, we're gonna continue to have this fight, but, you know, we, you know, the Women's Sports Foundation, you know, has always been since its existence an ally and advocacy and an ab ally and advocate and a catalyst, right, for t for tomorrow's leaders. And the whole purpose of this organization is to enable girls and women to reach their potential. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything they do, everything we do is is driving towards that goal. And, you um, and so, and, and obviously Billie Jean King, you know, our, our fierce leader had this vision in mind when she created this organization along with, you know, I think four or five other women um, uh, co-founders, but it, it's just, it's, it's important to us and it's important to the, um, the PSK collective brand to align with organizations that are out there on the front lines doing the work. And one of the things that resonated strongly strongly with me when we when we first rolled this out was um, women's equity and when right. I was thinking okay who in the women's space in sport is really out there you know doing the work and 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 I try not to be biased because obviously <laughs> there is a bit of bias for the foundation because of my yeah. long long lasting long term relationship with with mm -hmm. it um, but I asked around asked a number of people and everyone kept pointing back to Women's Sports Foundation. And so that's where and how we arrived at selecting the foundation as our initial partner and what I foresee being probably our one of our long-term long partners in this venture. Um, as we grow as a brand, then our, our pocketbook grows as a brand and we're able to bring yeah. on others. But you know, when, when, you know, when you can become a, a mainstream sort of a, a main, um, you know, apparel brand, when we can become a Nike or, a, you know, or not, not a Nike, we, we're our own selves, right? We're, we're PSK yeah. collective, but when we can garner that sort of um, revenue and attention and, and notoriety, um, then we can help a lot of organizations and, and obviously at, at the helm of that is the Women's Sports Foundation. Yeah. So what we've decided, yeah. So Go ahead. The, the part of this, what we do is we will donate 15% of our profits um, to support the mission of the foundation, um, and its mission of raising awareness for gender equity and in enabling all girls and women, as I said, to reach their highest potential in sports and school and work and life and beyond. Yeah. The, one of the things that I thought about that we've talked um, 
in the last couple of uh, episodes of the podcast was <laughs> a couple of people mentioned they were sneakerheads, and then other people talked about the impact of music and fashion. And if you think about it, when we were growing up, uh, the impact of all of those things started in the black and brown communities. And um, a lot of what's happened is the manipulation of the white and black dollar over time. And um, that's one of the things that I think is important is the power of the black dollar and the power of black and brown owned businesses um, because that has been manipulated over the years in terms of the marginalization or the elimination uh, or having things absent uh, from the opportunity to have equality in those areas, whether it's music, whether it's um, uh, clothing lines and, and trends and shoes obviously has been at the forefront for a long time. But talk about the, the impact, because I've heard this before from, from a number of people, the importance of a, you know, having a black owned company and what, what that means in, in terms of the, the bigger picture. Because the reason I ask it is this, one of our first podcasts, we had Antoine Washington on, he's an artist. And a lot of the narrative is in the black and brown community, they see athletes and athletes only that look like them. And it's important that they see artists and people that make clothes and people in different uh, aspects of their of their own people, because that's that that impacts them, and they don't think that they only have one path, you know, to to make it to right. to where they want to go. Yeah, I think that's that's spot on, right? It, it, it's a statement that um, Billie Jean King uses a lot, right? Um, you've got to see it to be it. Right. And it's always, unfortunately, that's not always the case, right? And many, you know, many folks who have been um, trailblazers, they, they didn't see it. They just created a way and then they became mm -hmm. what, you know, what they, what they envision, at least in their heads. But, you know, I think it's important from this, my perspective, I agree 100% with what you said. Um, uh, but I think it's important to, um, to create institutional wealth, right? It's, Absolutely. it's just create this this because that's you know if if we are and generational world, and generational wealth if, yes. if the world continues to spin as it has for right. as long as it's been around human nature is not going to really change a lot and so yeah. then you then have to put yourself in a position right we have to build wealth within our own communities and when we do that that is when we become you know we, um, we're on an equal playing field um and so um, for, for me, it's about creating this brand, but this, this brand along with others and being able to, to, to build wealth. And it's not just wealth uh, from a, 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 a currency perspective. Of course, perspective. yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's wealth in the messaging and everything that we are, it's wealth in confidence, it's wealth in um, self-esteem, it's, it's, you know, again, wealth in equity and equality. Absolutely. Um, it's all of those things to build that wealth, that, that sort of holistic wealth um, and, and, and health, right? There you go. What is that? Bet on women. That's right, buddy. That's right. That's, that's the best thing you said all day. <laughs> You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what have your conversations with Billie Jean been like? Because you know, a lot of people, she sort of reinvented herself, um, right. but still, a lot of people don't really know about her foundation. Uh, so, tell tell everyone a little bit about how she got this thing started. Obviously, she's famous for the the tennis right. match, you know. But you know, talk talk about some of your conversations and and how inspiring she's been to you. You know, I, when I when I have had conversations with her, we talked a little bit about rugby, right? I think that was one of my initial conversations with her, of and course. I, you know, I asked her, I'm like, how how can we bring women's rugby to the forefront? How are we going to get this? How are we going to get rugby as mainstream? But more importantly, women's rugby is more of a mainstream sport, you know. And her her, her feedback was, you you've got to, you just got to build it. You've got to make it uh, marketable. You've got to yeah. Um, make it alluring so that you know people want to watch it. I'm like, well, the sport itself, especially at the highest levels, um, and high level rugby, it's so exciting to watch. So exciting! Right? It, it's about captivating. It's about just basically sh uh, shepherding people and their eyes onto um, 
onto a screen, right? NBC has done a you know a fairly decent job at at, at showcasing rugby, um, you know, along with um, obviously with the Olympics, that's huge. Right. Um, uh, but but um, you know, and ESPN shows some rugby, but we've got to get we we have to. I think the rugby community and the governing body has to to really um, get to a place and of 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 being able to create a product right um that is marketable and that we can we actually sell and um offer and i think at this point it, there's there's a there's a perfect opportunity um because of the digital platform right yeah. to really get this sport in front of especially the gen z population yeah. um and and grow it you know looking 10 years down the road as opposed to, you know, today and tomorrow. And so um, it's making it marketable. You know, some of the other conversations that I've had with her, um, they're very, very funny. She's a very funny person. <laughs> um, and, and they're typically during board meetings when we're on a break, you know, she'll make a funny comment, but she's always encouraging. It's always something yeah. like, you know, for example, uh, when when we're at taking pictures, right, and, and there's, you know, maybe six six white folk in the room and and two blacks. She's always always like uh, encouraging and, and and pushing us to you know the, the black folk like get in the middle of the picket, get in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like for too far too long, you know, black folks have been put behind, right? You've been put in the, you know, she doesn't say this, but conceptually, you've been put in the back of the bus, right? Yeah. Get up there, get in front. You need to be showcased, and not in a, and in, 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 by any means in, in a patronizing way. It's it's very yeah, genuine, um, very sincere. But she's she's always 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 Advocating. just pushing, yeah. and she's accessible, right? She's you know in any event that she's you know she's present at, she's she makes her uh, herself available to talk to young women, kids, yeah. whoever, right? Um, she's accessible. And so that to me, right, that that celebrity, when you reach a celebrity status that she's at, right, to continue to make yourself accessible to other people, to offer, you know, the good that you have, um, you know, that's something that that you can't find, you don't find often. Well, yeah, not only that, Uh, though, I remember seeing her in San Diego, and she, you know, she obviously was traveling for a long time with her junior tennis players, and, and, uh, you know, doing, doing events, you know, and things like that. And, and, uh, that's a passion of hers, but, but what she's done to, to pay it forward is putting yeah. it mildly and, and, uh, you know, creating her legacy yeah. in a way that people may not even know that she was a tennis player, <laughs> you right. know, that, that, right. that this she's whole one of thing the is, best, yeah, yeah. She's one of the greatest tennis players in the history of the game, you know? Yeah. And so I really admire how she's reinvented herself. Like you mentioned, totally. Um, you know, she's, and that's, you know, and it's been very inspirational to me, even in my own, you know, athletic career and life. She's working um, out. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's doing all kinds out. of stuff. She's it's crazy. Tennis. Yeah, yeah. She's all over, you know, and I think she's just starting. Right. You know? And right. so, um, that's, that's it. That is, that is the epitome of, of, of totally. what we all need you know, to be striving for. So, um, are you collab when you do your mentoring, uh, and your motivational speaking and, um, you know, any coaching you're doing or talking about lead- women's leadership, uh, are you collabing with the WNBA? I know your board of directors, you know, you have Julie Fowdy, you know, you have a lot of people on there from, from different, different realms, but, but how does that work when you go out and, and talk nationwide or internationally? You know about these important topics and get people to change their minds. You know, not only from from the white perspective, but you know, males as well to s- just see things from different right. perspectives and inspire girls. Obviously, that's a big part of the mission. At the same time, right. well, within the uh, within the brand, we are looking to do that. Right, we we utilize our ambassadors um, because of the pandemic and the timing of our launch um we just haven't had the opportunity to do a lot of, yeah, of course. Uh, live speaking but that is absolutely the approach that we are going to take yeah. um once we sort of hit the pavement is to get a um, you know our fellow all our ambassadors out there yeah. with us um making appearances 
um, you know, the Julie Foudy. Well, Julie's not an ambassador, but she's certainly a friend to the brand. Um, yeah, of course. Um, and a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, it, it, that is absolutely our approach is to, to be out there, you know, and individually, all of the ambassadors are out there doing the work. Um, you know, I, I just spoke to um, uh, Alana uh, uh, previous uh, WSF president and uh, you know she's got a graduation speech coming up this weekend but we were just talking about you know just the contents of that speech and you know how her life and her her legacy is so important and it's so important to share that information but yeah, yeah. that's 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 what we're all about we're about coming like I said the collaborate we're a collaboration of athletes professional athletes PSK yeah. And we're just, we've come together to really push this cause. And so we're very excited of what's to come, especially this summer. Um, with the Olympics, we've got, you know, Naya Tapper, who's going to be representing Team USA in rugby at the Olympics, yep. out there putting her messaging, you know, to the world, um, and, and, you know, just to, just to name a few. So it's, it's Hannah Roberts, who's a BMXer, who's out there, you know, doing the Love same. It. So yeah, it's, it's, it's about a collaboration and we can, you know, if folks are interested in having, you know, any of these ambassadors speak, hey, it, it would, it's, it's, it would be a treat. Um, and if you want to have a few of, a few of these ambassadors doing some speaking engagements and things um, on a corporate level, totally. however, whatever, however you want to scale it, um, you know, they, they have a very good and strong message um, to deliver. So I strongly encourage it. Yeah. And it can, it can, the layers are, are, uh, endless, right. It could be right. In, a, in a diversity training. It can, it could be not necessarily that you're collabing directly with the WNBA, but, but what's interesting is that this new narrative that's being, and I wouldn't say pushed, but that is just evolving organically, right. uh, is powerful because, you watch more games of the WNBA, and I know basketball is a passion of yours, and you see the message that they've been, um, you know, sending internationally and domestically with how the, the election changed and how they forced an owner out, and then you're doing what you're doing, and Billie Jean and women's soccer, uh, and, then, and then the NBA and LeBron, and, you know, everyone's collabing on, right. on these issues. Um, you know, to, to, you know, have women in positions uh, where decisions are made. And yeah. so I think that whole thing, even though that's, they're indirectly related, uh, people are starting to see that, hey, wait a minute, um, you know, it, there's, there's a, there's a bridging of the gap going on here. So that part's, yeah. uh, that part's inspiring. So talk about your, your commentator role with the Olympics, speaking of the Olympics. Um, well, <laughs> That's not a, that's not an official. Is it a working process? <laughs> it's, not a, it's not official, official thing. So blame um, Alex. He's the one that told me to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that hopefully. comes about, but I'm it's excited possible. to, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just excited to, to, to watch the Olympics and, totally. um, you know, watch these teams and see what they, you know, how resilient they are and have, are, have been. Um, through this pandemic, you know, I've, I speak to members of the U.S. team uh, quite frequently, and um, yeah. you know, the it's training must have been hard, right? To because to, to, yeah. a lot of it has to be done on your own. Yeah, uh, exactly. There's going to be a, a tournament coming up in June, um, so folks, if you're in the LA area, it's the last uh, Friday, Saturday in, in June. I guess it's to be the 26th, the 27th. Are they streaming of June. it? Can we watch um, there'll it? There'll be an international tournament out in LA. Um, with featuring the U.S. men and women's sevens teams, along with obviously other countries, um, but it'll be a great opportunity to do do so, uh, take a, a, a warm up look at what will happen or what you'll see um, later in the summer. That's but cool. um, you know, it, it's been a it's been a rough go, and it's been the, the crazy thing is not just been a rough go for the team; it's been a rough go for everyone. And so I think we're going to see some breakout athletes. We're going to see some breakout teams, um, you know, just because no one's been able to play. And so it, everything has been done pretty internally. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for it. Uh, I think the world is, is just waited, waiting with uh, bated breath to see um, the Olympics and rugby and every sport. Totally. And, and, and these athletes really 
um, you know, become unhinged. I think it's, hey, it's for, for those of you that haven't watched rugby, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to watch it uh, during the Olympics, but it, in particular with Phaedra, if you haven't watched any of her highlights, I got to tell you, when I prepare for the first podcast, I was watching some of those highlights and you were trucking people. <laughs> Man, so some of them took like a minute to get up. They didn't know what hit them. That's so funny. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that seems like a seems like a lifetime ago, really. But uh, yeah, no, so, yeah. Well, I, had so, a, I had my yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, I just had my own. That was uh, I was working your own style. My <laughs> <career>. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, and people that haven't seen you in person, right? They haven't met you. You're strong, right? You're you got strong legs like you're you got great center of gravity low center of gravity you know you're you're explosive people with low centers of gravity (laughs) short but thank you mike appreciate that hey come on now Uh, so so you so you did this uh competitive thing for a long time and so you were you chomping at the bit when you started doing this mma thing tell everyone about that really was um i was you know I, i had been doing some I took a, I, I stepped away from like heavy weight lifting and things like that. And right. um, after I retired in 2017, and I wanted to get into more mobility and movement, right? Just because I wanted to just move my body. My body felt like it was a little bit stagnant um, at that point. And, you know, everybody wants to uh, put it on aging. And I guess aging, yes, that's what the aging does. But ah. not this, none of this, none uh. of this is, irre- but it's not <laughs> irreversible. Let's put it that yeah. way. So yeah. for me, I, I, I felt like oh, I, I have so much more inside that I want to, that I want to discover and explore. And so, um, you know, I, I had, I was on vacation um, in 2019 and, you know, someone asked me if I was a, an MMA fighter. And it <laughs> Out of nowhere? Me. What? And I'm like, and I'm wow. like, hmm, maybe I am. Maybe I am a MMA fighter. <laughs> so when I got back to the U.S., I immediately came here, where I am now. I walked into the Henso Gracie Academy, and I walked out, and I never stopped training. I've been training since. And so um, it's been a I, I train six days a week. I'm in a fight camp right now. Um, wow. I'm hoping to fight June 19th. And um, my first will be my first fight, but I have a goal of, you know, fighting professionally. And, and I don't want to definitely have to, I'm certainly not going to have a 20 year um, MMA yeah, career because yeah. that's just not what I want to do. I don't even know if that's a possibility, but yeah. just to, you know, just to be able to make it at a professional level at, at you know, at my age and to be able to come back, um, you know, from, from playing a sport at a high level, rebuild from the ground up, you know, as a monumental feat to me and so and for you know so i'm 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 loving this stuff but even if we don't even get that far right the day in and day out of learning and learning doing things with my body that i had never been able to do um and being able to manip- manipulate other people without using strength which is what i did entirely in rugby right is incredible and so I, i'm i'm every day i'm so excited i train full time I'm in the academy, you know, most mornings at 9.30, um, 10 o'clock. Um, and I'm here today until 6.15, you know, in and out. I'm not training the entire time, but, you know, it's a full day of work and recovery for me. Um, but it's awesome. It's just awesome. And I so, work with an awesome team, you know. Yeah. So I remember in our first podcast, you talked about how you were humbled daily. Uh, when you first started the sport, because, you know, (laughs) it's just not something that came naturally to you. You know, there's, there's ground fighting involved. So what do you tell the girls out there who, you know, they have to navigate their way around a lot of things, especially the, uh, you know, the LGBTQ community, you know, there's all kinds of different things that, that are having to be navigated, but we're in a instant gratification um, sort of couple of generations now and so what do you tell people about failure and the importance of failure uh and getting up again and not quitting because the life lessons more importantly than anything that are learned through sport um are invaluable that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life you couldn't you couldn't have teed this up better you know failure is transition um Mm -hmm. and, and 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 how you transition is based on your attitude and outlook 
right? So it's an opportunity to transition into success. And that's, it's so cliche on these maps is, you know, you, you go into something with a certain level of, um, of uh, expectation of success, but also with a certain level of expectation of failure. Mm. And you always, you can always go from, you know, obviously that a point of failure into transitioning and catching your opponent off guard, but it doesn't come overnight, right? It's, it's, it's teaching your body. It's doing things over and over and over and over again. And I am so much more cognizant of that this time around than I was in rugby. I think in rugby, I just, you know, I, I was, I was maybe ahead of my time. I was extremely physical and strong and I used that, but, and I'll be, you know, I'll be completely honest. I, there was not a ton of technique, um, you know, <laughs> it's maybe some, right. But I, Angles. Was, I, I relied yeah. so heavily on just pure strength. Um, and I had to do that, right. This is, this is a turn, a time in my life in a sport that I want to be so technically savvy that I don't have to exert 50% mm. of what I, what my capacity is and be successful. And so that comes from repetition after repetition, but it also comes from someone who is co someone on your side, a coach who is so detail oriented right. and knows what he, he or she knows what they know. And they also know what they don't know and can accept that and bring in help when necessary. That for me has been um, redefining. And so I gladly come in and repeat jabs, repeat jab right, right? Repeat jab right hook. Uh, and, 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 and it's not, it, you, you know, it's not like you reach a level of excellence where you don't have to continue to practice this stuff. Right? Yeah, right. Like you have to continue to grind it out every day because your body Bomba different mentality. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's something, if you want to be successful and you want to, um, you know, get, be at the highest level, you have got to be committed to putting in the time, the work, um, until your body can just do it in its sleep to your nervous yeah. system knows and is programmed to just go into autopilot. And that's when, you know, you've reached a level. Um, and then, you know, again, speaking to this transition, success and failure, um, you absolutely must over and over again experience failure that's the only way in real sustainable success uh pathway in my opinion yeah so. and i think that's the common theme when you talk about old school coaches versus new school coaches mm -hmm. is that we all agree that you know quitting isn't necessarily the best option that if you grind it out it does take time and it is hard but the way that you feel about yourself, how empowered you'll feel about yourself and, and the lessons that it'll you'll carry with you and you won't even realize it half the time when you're living your life down the road uh, is invaluable. So I'm glad you talked yeah. about that. Do you, do you have a like a sports psychologist? Did you ever work with someone from that standpoint to help you with some of the harder times or were you always just naturally gifted in that area? You know, I've, I've worked with psychologists. I've worked with a few sports psychologists when I was out at the Olympic Training Center. I worked with a psych, you know, the team worked with a hmm. sports psychologist. I had a sports psychologist, a personal psychologist who also was a sports psychologist yeah. who was very awesome cool. um, when I was in San Diego. Um, you know, and I have had, I mean, I've had therapy over the years, which has been helpful. But, I, you know, honestly, life and, and taking, I think everyone's got a little bit of, uh, a, little, a little bit of psychology in them or is, is a psychologist, you know, especially in the coaching world, oh. if they, if they, you know, um, gained and, and learned. And, um, and so, you know, a lot of times I would lean and have leaned on coaches. I've leaned on teammates, um, mm. for that push, for that bit of advice. And, um, you know, especially probably now, you know, I, I have, I'm, again, I'm surrounded by a great team of coaches, mm. of, of, of teammates, of, training partners who um offer support um yeah it's it's just you know my partner that's great, awesome you know support yeah. to my life partner so you know that all of Your those dogs things, my, <laughs> my dogs are like everything right <laughs> yeah so yeah it's it's i'm very fortunate and i think the key the one of the things i would tell you know boys young young girls and young boys out there everyone really you know, you just surround yourself with a great support system. Right. Also Absolutely. Also make yourself available to be that support. 
So for those of you that are joining late, uh, we're going to talk about her uh, line of clothing before we let uh, Phaedra Knight go. We're joined by Phaedra Knight here on Facebook Live and IG Live. Uh, this is Hootie Hoot from the Sports Deli Podcast. Uh, we're so honored that uh, Phaedra is joining us today and we're promoting her, her new line of clothing, PSK Collective. You can find it at walmart.com, pskcollective.com, kohls.com, at TJ Maxx. And um, man, it's uh, it's just a it's you, an amazing. You grab these hats at Lids. So at Lids, had some, that's right. This was one of the or earlier iterations yes. of the hats that Lids Love created. Love it. So an original. And uh, so they they got t- tell her what they can go on the website. But you, there's all kinds of things for people with all kinds of uh, different um, uh, sizes hey, and. Yep. Just amazing stuff. I mean, I, I, I keep looking at it and there's more things all the time when I when I when I go back and revisit my daughter, you guys sent us some stuff for my daughter and her teammates. We can't thank you enough for that. They love it. So we're going to send some photos to Alex and, and make sure you guys get that up wherever you need to have it to to promote it. So it's, it's just a, the, the, it's, it's quality stuff. You can see it in the background here. I got some other things. Uh, you can see the the red, the, the hoodie uh, we got the sort of the football uh, rugby theme here. And we got this uh, camouflage. So they got all kinds of different colors. They got uh, um, stuff uh, for leggings and, and, and sweats and sh- shorts, spandex, all kinds of stuff. So definitely check them out. And like she said, 15% of it goes back to the Women's Sports Foundation. And, um, you know, we've been, we've been pumping it and supporting it since you came on and we'll continue to do so. And, and really uh, anything else that. you want to share, share with everybody about that, about where you know, to go or any, anything else that I yeah. missed? Well, you, you did a great job of, of really putting it out there. Um, you know, what I will say is um, it, it's it, this, this line came about during this pandemic and the perfect time for bringing on streetwear um, fused with this app. geared toward Gen Z, Z and Gen Z athletes. Our clothes are designed and infused with a spirit of independence and empowerment meant for all bodies, all sizes, all shapes, all ages. Um, and so uh, we, we, you know, we, um, you know, we're happy to have be in Kohl's now and walmart.com, as you mentioned, Liz was one of our initial partners. Um, yes, bet on women. Yes, always, always. That's the second <laughs> best it. thing you've said all day. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, <laughs> and, you know, again, we're all about the diversity, inclusivity, and equality. And those are values yep. that are dri- they're driving in our quarter. They're driving forces behind the brand. Um, and we love spreading our mission. So we'd love to, you know, we have a new line where we have new things coming up yep. every month. Um, so it. you'll, you'll be, you know, we got some awesome, um, tights and yep. uh, leggings and things like that i actually wear my leggings to training they're great they're durable they're comfortable um and they get the job done so yeah we'd love your support uh we'd love for you to be rocking the brand we'd love to hear your feedback if it's something that you're not happy with we want to make it right we want to make our clothing and our apparel um as as close to perfect as possible and so um you know let us know awesome well, uh, you know, in so many ways, you're so inspiring to, you know, like I said, as we approach the 50th anniversary, and I know that's so important to the Women's Sports Foundation and Billie Jean King uh, that started in 1972, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to, to promote women and gender equality, and uh, we, we're honored that you joined us today, and again, you can find her at Walmart, Lids, PSK Collective, uh, Kohl's. Uh, and you can go to uh, her Twitter page, which is PSK underscore collective or Phaedra Knight. Knight is with a K, Phaedra Knight.com. And you can find out all the information that you need uh, to check any of these things out. So much love, much respect, continued success, and uh, good luck tonight and good luck going forward to striving to be a world champion. I appreciate that, Mike. I really do. Thank you for doing what you do. And we'll talk again soon, right? All right, you got it. anything we can do to, to help you or anything with regards to the foundation or, or PSK, let us know. We're, we're on it. We're all about it. What part of, what part, what part of, Cal- are you in California, right? San Diego. Yep. You know it. All right. So you got to come up for the rugby match in June. How about that? I'll get you some tickets. We'll connect offline, yeah. but um, 
definitely come up with that and hopefully we can, uh, you know, hang hey, out a little bit. Anything I can do to, to, okay. to promote it and my daughter can come uh, yes. and check that yes. out. And yes. I told Coach Wade from the Chicago Sky, he came on. You know, awesome. we want to come support the sky when they're in L.A. Okay. So okay. anything we can do to connect these dots, man. OK. All right. Well, we'll be in touch on that. But All right. Sounds good. So I'll, I'll hit up Alex. We'll talk soon. OK. Take care. All right. Much love. Peace. You too. All right, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Bye bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed today's incredible interview and we're so honored that you shared space with us today. You can always send us an email to thesportsdeli at gmail.com. And remember, please mask up if you haven't had your vaccine yet. Black Lives Matter. Stop Asian hate. It takes a village. And until next time, for Dr. J and Coach K, I'm Hootie Hoot. Peace.